What's up, Reefers? Happy Thursday. I know we're a little bit early today, but I first want to thank Peter for taking the time out of his schedule to share with us something that many of us in the hobby have a love for, aside from what's in our tank, is the photography aspect. And if any of you are like me, you've got a heck of a time trying to get the right filters and settings and whatnot. So Peter and I have known each other for a while and I've always admired his photography skills. And so um, he's it, uh, agreed to come on today and we're actually gonna do this as a two part series. So today is gonna be the photography 101 and then we're gonna do another one to go in a little bit more of a deep dive uh, into some like nitty gritty things uh, in another episode. But first and foremost, Peter, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Really appreciate it. Cool. Thanks for the intro, Aaron. Uh, glad to be here. And I know we only have 30 minutes a day to go through a whole photography session, but that's probably not going to be enough time. So I'm trying to run through kind of my workflow and what I do to take uh, re pictures of my own tank and sometimes uh, pictures of conferences that I go to and the tools that I use, right? And so I guess the, the number one thing that most people uh, starting out with taking pictures of their tank is what, what kind of equipment to use. Um, yeah whether you use a nice DSLR like my Canon or using your iPhone or Android phone, right? And equally good tools to use, right? Um, I think the most important aspect of uh, reef photography, and I take this from my photography background for portraits and landscape, is, is lighting. Uh, lighting control is pretty much the most important aspect of taking clear uh, clarity and, and in-focus pictures in your reef tank. The other challenges that you might run into is um, our blue lights, right? Our, our tanks yeah. are on a spectrum that is different from other types of photography. And so there are things to combat that. And the most common things to use uh, are orange or yellow filters on our lenses. And that just eliminates the, the blue from the picture. Right. And if you want to go more in depth and, and, and take uh, your photography to the next level, there's auto white balancing that you can do with your uh, DSLR cameras, or you can take it a step further and do some white balancing in post-processing in photo and, editing tools. And, and if I could just jump in for a second. So one of the challenges that I found is, you know, using a smartphone and, and, and particularly using the Apple, you know, the, the native uh, camera on Apple just really does a difficult job adjusting to yeah. the, the blue lights, right? But I, I found some of the other apps actually have a color balance tool in that that allows you in a, either your photo or in a video to color correct on that. Um, is that something that you know that you've dabbled with as well outside of the DSLR space? Oh, absolutely. I use my DSLR probably only fifty percent of the time. The other half of the time, I, I definitely use my iPhone. And there's, like you said, there's quirks with using your mobile phone when taking pictures yeah. and, and dealing with the white balance. And so. For my iPhone, for instance, you'll notice that even if you're using the native iPhone camera app, that it's trying to auto white balance for you. Even when you put on a, uh, a clip-on filter, similar to this one by Ocean Box Designs, this is the MK2 Pro lens, which is yeah. trying to um, filter out the blue light uh, in, in your tanks. And for what Aaron said earlier about you know, adjusting the white balance using other applications. A very good uh, app that I use from the App Store that's free is actually made by Adobe. And if you actually download Adobe Lightroom Mobile mm -hmm. and sign up for a free account, inside that application is a camera app. And it allows you to actually uh, adjust your parameters, like your aperture, your shutter speed, uh, and, and so forth. And you can also adjust the white balance. Can you, can you see, can you save the settings in, in that version? Uh, for that version, I think it, it, it stays where your last settings okay. are, uh, in the app. So if you set it to a specific setting, it'll just stay there. Similar to if you're using a physical sure. uh, camera, right? <laughs> Because I use the the Pro Camera app, uh, I think when I got it, it was like ten bucks, and honestly, it was it was ten dollars of great investment. Um, however, it it recalibrates the setting every time, so I'll have to go in and, and, and adjust it. So I have it written down, but it's kind of a pain to have to go in and, and adjust every time. So um, if that's possible, I'll definitely you know check that out. But 
you know, to hear that you've been able to achieve that with the iPhone is great. You know, those that you have Samsungs uh, and Google phones, I hear that the camera is much better at adjusting to the, the blue lights uh, and, and you have a toggle right in this, in the, uh, in the native app that makes it easier. Us iPhone users aren't so lucky. Yeah, just a tip with the iPhone users, right? When, when you clip on your, your filter on your phone, sometimes it auto white balances and it, and it still makes the picture very blue, even with the orange filter. Mm. So what you do is you switch to video mode and you switch back to photo mode and it will rebalance the white balance with the filter. <clears throat> The phone. Make sure that the filter is clipped onto your iPhone. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like when you use the white piece of paper when you use exactly. your, your camera and it, it corrects against that. Exactly. Yeah. So it corrects yeah. against that. You know, the, the other tip I, that I, I will share with you guys is that your reef lighting, um, you can adjust it more onto the white side, the white spectrum. Mm -hmm. like, uh, a lot of us run full blue spectrum and it's and it's super blue and yes it, it makes the pictures pop when you're using the orange sure. pictures, um, but the the colors might be a little bit saturated in, in my opinion uh, so like for my Kessel lights I would use 30 percent uh, white on the spectrum so that I get a balance between the blue and the white light so it, it helps a lot uh, during post processing too when you're trying to remove the blue light it makes it a lot easier. And, and most of the, the LED manufacturers have now a, a photography mode that you can do, you know, either switch to it or it has a timer that you can switch to it and it'll count down. That has come a long way, you know, from the, the earlier LEDs, even just a couple of years ago and, and having it where you have to go in and manually adjust it. But um, I know I, I think that we often forget about that, that you can just go in and change your light setting temporarily when doing a, a video or pictures. Right. And, and since we're on the lighting topic, right, um, some tips that I do when I'm taking pictures of the tank here or, or tanks uh, at my friend's house is that you want to eliminate as much of the background lighting uh, as possible. If, if you have uh, windows in that room or if you mm -hmm. have a television set in the background that's playing, turn off all the sources of lights that could actually reflect light off of the glass and cause glare. Uh, a lot of these clip-on lenses nowadays come with something called a, a CPL filter, which mm -hmm. is a particular polarized filter, and it, and it helps. It doesn't eliminate, but it helps the, the glare and the reflections off of your aquarium glass. So uh, when you're taking pictures, you don't see uh, the background reflections or the, uh, the light coming in from a window causing distractions. Uh, what you can also do is um, move closer to the glass, right? Uh, you can purchase kind of like a, what they call a lens hood for mm. your uh, camera or you can just use a piece of paper kind of to cover the top piece of your camera so that any external light that's hitting the glass uh, will reduce the glare. Great tip, that's a great tip there. Yeah, and, and you know, shooting from, from different angles in the tank can cause problems too. Uh, there, there's something called uh, refraction, not reflection, but refraction of the glass. So when you're taking a picture of your tank, make sure that you're shooting straight into the glass at your subject. You don't want to shoot at an angle, at any type of angle through the glass, because you'll distort the image and it won't come out in focus or clear. So it, it's kind of like the Pink Floyd uh, prism, right? Where the, the light hits it and you get the rainbow. So you get the, the yeah, the light bouncing off of it. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, moving on to a few things since we're, since we're short on time, right? Uh, I kind of wanted to go over kind of what I use on my DSLR, and then I'll go over some of my mobile phone tools uh, with you guys so that uh, we kind of hit on all the aspects of photography. And I know that not everyone can go out and buy a DSLR, right? It's an expensive sure. equipment, but you gotta start somewhere, and using your mobile phone is a great starting point with um, you know the clip-on lenses, and there's a few tools that I'll show you in just a second. But um, on my DSLR, uh, as you can see, I have it on a tripod, which I recommend getting a sturdy tripod, even for your mobile phone. Uh, if you can get a tripod to minimize the vibrations when you're taking videos or, or taking pictures, and that'll help with the clarity and, and getting things in focus. Mm. Um, but if you visit my Instagram page, you'll see a lot of uh, pictures where it almost looks like the camera is in the water, yeah. right? So I use uh, Building Obsessions Photo Tube on my DSLR. So this covers the lens so that you can stick the uh, half portion of the camera 
and the top of the water to take pictures inside your tank. Nice. Uh, the original design of the ocean box, oh, sorry, the uh, building obsession photo tube is designed to attach to the bottom of the camera, but there's a generic uh, Amazon cage that you can buy for your, for your camera, whether you're using a Sony, Canon, or Nikon, mm -hmm. they're all compatible. So okay. I had attached the photo tube on the side so that frees up the bottom so I can still attach my camera to a tripod. And uh, removing this photo tube is cumbersome at times, right? When you're trying to switch between taking external pictures and pictures inside your aquarium with the photo sure. tube, this lets me quickly release and attach the photo tube. Within and the you were mentioned earlier about uh, you know the shade filter for it. Would you ever use the... Uh... The, the tube and leave it on to be able to help to block off some of that external ambient light? Oh, it's, it's excellent for doing that. It, it mm -hmm. acts almost like a, a hood lens, right? It hood lens, yes. Yeah. yeah, just make sure that you kind of wipe it dry after you use it inside the tank because then you get all the watermarks uh, on the front of the tube and you won't <laughs> notice it until you upload your pictures. Um, but on the top here, it, it has a bunch of accessories and hot shoe mounts where I've actually connected a Kessel A360 light to kind of do fill-in uh, yes. for the shadows and the lighting. Since the lights for the aquarium are shooting straight down, mm -hmm. you'll get a lot of shadows from the sides and even from the bottom. So you can adjust um, with the gooseneck that I have attached to my camera rig. Uh, and it also has the swivel mount uh, from Kessel on the end of this gooseneck. So that I, I can adjust where the light goes. Uh, so that's a useful tool. And uh, so this is the DSL, DSLR setup. Um, so I want to switch gears really quick and talk about kind of the majority of what people will use, which is your mobile phone. And I talked about the gooseneck with the Kessel light. Um, Flipper, uh, the makers of the, you know, the scrubber. The scrubber, yeah. Does the algae scrubber. It also makes something called a deep sea viewer. And they actually have accessories like the orange filter that you can attach to your uh, deep sea viewer so you can uh, filter out the blue light. And the really neat thing that I use, and it's similar to my A360 Kessel light on the tripod mount, is the flipper light. Mm. You got this. It has a white light and yep. it also has a blue light. And you can turn both of them on if you want to. And this acts the same way as my A360 light. To It'll help in that fill in. Out. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty bright and it works great. You can, you can hold it in your hand like this with your, your phone and, and you can take pictures uh, that way. This is a fraction of the cost of, of that setup. And I think most people will find this a lot more convenient to kind of take out of their uh, accessory box and just take pictures of it really quick. You can even attach it to your tank glass with the provided magnet and just leave it there right leave it in there yeah I, I saw that advertised a few times uh, and and i've sent uh in, in fact um one of the the non um light ones to my buddy alex and uh we were talking about you know do you really need the light on it but it's good to know that it's actually powerful enough to uh, to get some extra fill in them um, oh, you know, I, I haven't known yeah good tip. so that's a tool that i use very frequently to get quick shots of stuff. And sometimes like if you see a fish perched in a certain position or a clownfish is like in an anemone doing something that you want to capture really quick, busting out the DSLR is too slow. You'll, <laughs> They'll you'll be gone the already. You'll miss yeah. the opportunity, right? Um, I, I'm actually surprised that you don't have your camera already mounted on your, uh, in, in your <laughs> tank area someplace or mounted off the glass that on a, on a retractable, um, you know, joinery system, uh, track that you can use at any time yeah unfortunately because i have multiple tanks i, I move the, I move the <laughs> system around too much to kind of keep it in a static area but yeah, that, that would be a great idea to have a secondary setup to do that yeah i, I actually I, I think that the, the folks over at um tidal gardens i, I saw than uh, have uh, one with uh, becca and she was talking about how they have a track system that oh, they, yeah. they put the camera on and they can move it around. And um, it, for those of you who are curious, it's worth checking out. But um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think your point about stability is important to be able to put it on a tripod and uh, you know either use your phone or the, uh, the clicker to get that picture uh, or, or the timer to count down is a great way to help reduce some of the noise. Yeah, and sometimes using a, like a remote shutter, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a cheap remote shutter even for your, your mobile phone uh, that connects via Bluetooth and you can use it to to take pictures of like your shy fish that don't come out with your in front of the tank, right? Yeah. 
but you you can set up the camera and have like a remote shutter to, to take pictures like that. Uh, you did mention like the tracking system, right? Mm -hmm. Where you where you put the camera and it kind of smoothly kind of tracks the subject, or you can yeah. make really smooth panning type videos. Uh, let me show you this really quick. When you're when you're purchasing a tripod, uh, most tripods come with what they call a ball head, mm -hmm. and uh, you can actually replace the ball head with a with a higher quality one. And by doing so, you have the extremely smooth movement of being able to pan the camera. Uh, when you're doing full tank shots, you can smoothly do panning shots without having to purchase a very expensive gimbal. I do. see. Good to know. So the the oil and the liquid in the ball head uh, allowed you to transition the ball head extremely smoothly. So and, and for those of you guys who are interested in some of these products, I'll ask Peter to send over some of the Amazon links uh, and I'll put down into the description below so that if you guys are trying to uh, Google it now, uh, I'll help save you the trouble on that later. I'll send you guys my affiliate links. So that you there you go, with the affiliate <laughs> links. That's right. And if you're not already uh, following uh, Peter uh, on, uh, on Instagram, check out it's Bay Area underscore reef on Instagram and you can see all his beautiful pictures. Great. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, I did mentioned the Ocean Box Design clip-on filter earlier, and it comes with a bunch of lenses. Uh, it's like a seven kit lens, and it has uh, the actinic filters that filter out the blue. It has a bunch of uh, different uh, macro lenses that you can yeah. choose to do close-up photos uh, of your reef paint. And then also it comes with an extremely thin CPL filter, which uh, removes a lot of the glare. So I use this 50% of the time, and it's a great tool. I've actually posted a bunch of sample pictures mm -hmm. and videos that I, I've made with this clip. So uh, be sure to check that out. Yeah, uh, the, the new V2 is, is pretty awesome. I know and a lot of folks, including myself, are waiting for it to come out. And uh, it, it's it's pretty nice. And definitely, you know, the versatility that gives you with all the different lenses there is great. Absolutely. Uh, so another, another couple of things that I want to share with you before we run out of time is that, you know, I talked about the building of Session Photo 2 where I put mm -hmm. the entire camera in the lens, uh, the entire lens in the water. But if you guys have a coral viewer, mm. right, just a, like a simple one mm. like this uh, from eShops or, or there's a bunch of other brands that you can, you can even make your own uh, by gluing like an acrylic box together sure. and, and using it as well. And so you mm. would float this in the top of your water and then you can stick your uh, phone in here to take top down shots of your tank mm. and it will pretty much satisfy the, the same requirement as the photo tube does. Um, except with the photo tube, you have a variety of lenses that you can use to zoom in uh, to the bottom of the tank. Since this is kind of like a 24 inch deep tank, sure. if you want to take something, uh, a, a picture of the, the coral that's sitting on the sand bed, uh, I usually zoom in uh, with my DSLR using that. So it's funny that you bring that up because I, I've got a couple of those as well. And what I did is I, I bought on Amazon some of the um, the films, the, you know, the different color, you know, I, and I got a whole set from yeah. like, it was reds, greens, yellows, browns, and, and I got them big enough and I cut the, a circle around so I could put inside of there. And so then I can just put my phone in right on it. And then it gets me the filter without having to add something else to it. Then you oh, get perfect. the odd angles. Yeah. Um, so, so that was, you know, kind of a, a, a DIY trick that I, you know, started using for that. That works. That works great. Yeah. But yep. Yeah, so Coral Box Viewer. Yep. Awesome to view your corals and also awesome to use it as a photography tool as well. Uh, on my Instagram, I have pictures of like uh, corals that have kind of like a black background and all mm -hmm. the use is just the coral and the background is black. Yeah. And so I achieved this by using something called a photo box. Um, so Zen Reef creates this really cool um, kind of acrylic box that you can uh, oops, that you can place your corals in and then it mm. has a bunch of frag plugs on frag the bottom. Holes, yeah. And if you want to cover those frag plug holes, they also make these plates where you can put like one frag plug mm. in it. And they also have a plate that's completely blank as well. If you have some type of coral like acanthos or scolies that you just mm -hmm. want to place on the bottom and take a picture of. So this is magnetic and it, and it connects to the front panel of your glass. And you just put the coral here. You can use the photo tube to take a top down picture of it or yep. you can take a straight a uh, picture of it through the glass using this photo tube. And when using the that uh, that box there, would you have it uh, at the surface or would you drop it down so you get a little bit of flow or it depends on what you're what you're it photographing. Depends, depends on what you're photographing. If uh, if you put it down too low, then you might shadow the coral because the box blocks out the light 
from I see. three sides. So the higher you have it in the tank, the more light you get in here. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's still not sufficient, then you can use the flipper coral light, or you can use uh, an external uh, uh, coral light like the A360 Kessel to, to light it up. Right? Good to know. So lots, lots of things to choose from uh, in terms of uh, tools that don't require really expensive equipment, such as the DSLR. Um, one more tool that I kind of want to go over, like if you frequent like coral swaps or if you go to coral conferences mm -hmm. and you want to document your trip, uh, a really in a, inexpensive tool is something called a gimbal. Mm -hmm. And this gimbal is specifically made for uh, cell phones to be attached to. And it has a folding mechanism where you can fold it out and it's portable. This one specifically is made by DJI. This is the OM5 model. And like earlier when I was talking about the panning and the tilting of the yep. ball head on the tripod, this will give you the same effect, uh, but you can control it via your phone. Mm. And you really cool time lapse with this and, and have it uh, kind of over time, over like a 20, 30 minute span of time, kind of pan and tilt. And you can get That's some cool. really cool uh, effects using uh, this gimbal. And, you know, on sale, this thing is a little over a hundred bucks. And great tool to have, uh, especially because it's foldable. You can throw it in your bag and, and travel with it. That's um, a great tip. And, and I, as you were talking about going to, uh, to shows and whatnot, you know, what is your thoughts about the, uh, the lighting, the pen, right? Cause sometimes you're at a place and it doesn't have the most blue light that you want to oh, see at yeah. the phosphorescence. I'm sure you have one of those coral pens that you will look uh, for some extra pop, right? Yeah. So there's two things that I use. There, there's these, uh, I guess, they're called coral flashlights, right? Okay, sure. Uh, so, you know, it's just a blue light that can provide more supplemental lighting if uh, something's dark. Or if you want to check out corals at a coral <laughs> show that uh, you want to shine a blue light on to see its coloration, stuff like that. So this is a really cool tool to have too. Thanks for bringing it up, Aaron. Uh, I had this in my back pocket, um, but didn't think about showing it off. But yes, this, this, is, uh, this one's made by Polyp Labs, I think. Um, so you can, you can check that out. I think that the common theme in this, uh, is that as reefers, you know, it's not enough just for us to enjoy it ourselves or to have our, our buddies over and, and share it. But, you know, because of, you know, the platform like Instagram and YouTube, we want to be able to showcase our tanks the best way possible. And so I, I appreciate you going through all the different tips and tricks and that you use because you have a stunning tank. You really do. And, and I appreciate, you know, the detail that you put into not just your photography, but the process you put into showing off your tank uh, online, because you've really done a great job. Great. Thanks, Aaron. And, you know, it, it, you guys helped me out tremendously by, uh, you know, pushing me forward and, and I like doing the content. It's, it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I enjoy the process. I enjoy looking at the tank. I enjoy, uh, collecting coral and kind of documenting its process and its growth, right? Because yeah. I'll, I'll revisit a picture that I took maybe four or five months ago and, and, and it'll be completely different looking uh, with the growth and all that. Yeah, and, and kind of a, a, a tangent slightly, but uh, your, your lights are on a really cool uh, automatic uh, lifting kit. And that's actually how you and I met each other was talking about that. But I can imagine, you know, from a photography perspective, the ability to raise and lower your lights Absolutely. really helps as well. If you want to get a full shot and, you know, eliminate some of the external light that's flooding into it versus, you know, getting right in there. And so um, not just the intensity or the color light, but the how you look at the height of it, I'm, I'm assuming makes a big difference as well. Yeah, I, I have behind me that setup right here, right? Mm -hmm. So these lights are set up on... Uh, you know those uh, stand-up desk legs yeah. that uh, kind of move up and down? Well, behind this setup is essentially the stand-up desk yeah. that's mounted to extruded aluminum. And it, and it allows me to kind of bring up and down the light. So, you know, I don't know if you guys can see it go up. Yeah, we can see it. Uh, but I can move it up and down. And, and the benefit of this is that when I, when I have my rig on the top of the tank. Sometimes if I want to take like a full entire top down shot of my tank, mm -hmm. the, light, the lights get in the way because my lens is not wide enough, right? So I have to move up. And so if I move up, the lights are in the way so I can yeah. adjust that. 
And, and uh, speak, speaking of lenses, real quick, um, what's your go-to lens, and what is your perspective of a fisheye lens uh, in the in the hobby? Ah, uh, so I have two lenses that I use pretty much most of the time, which is the 100 millimeter macro lens. It's a mm -hmm. very good overall kind of lens that you can use in and out of the water. Uh, you can even use it regularly, just taking straight on shots of your tank. Um, and then sometimes you'll see pictures where I have the entire tank shot in, in, in one picture and I use a uh, 16 to 35 millimeter lens. And this is a very wide, what they call a wide lens. Mm -hmm. So you can be very close to the tank, but it captures a very wide angle of it. But um, fish eye lens, I don't recommend fish eye lenses. It, it gives a very uh, weird kind of, you know, distortion, look, distorted <laughs> look. To it. Sure. So, so with like a really wide 1635, it, it removes that fish eye uh, distortion uh, effect, as you, as you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one is a very good lens to have in your arsenal of photography gear. And then uh, even with the iPhone and stuff, they, they the new iPhones, they have like the, uh, you know, triple lens in the front. And there's, right. there's a wide angle lens uh, as part of the newer iPhones, which allows you to take a pretty wide uh, picture of your tank without having to stand so far back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know there's only a couple minutes left uh, in this talk, so I kind of just want to end it with a couple of tips, if you sure. will. Um, so when, when uploading photos and videos to Instagram, you'll notice that sometimes they come out really blurry, grainy. It, it's not as sharp as it looks like in your photo album. So when you're uploading to IG, make sure that you're shooting in 1080p on your phone. Mm. making sure that you are not shooting any higher than 30 frames per second uh, on your iPhone or your Android device. And then if you're using a, an external editor, such as Lightroom or Premiere or any other editor, make mm -hmm. sure when you export your video that the audio is no higher than 3,500 bit rate. Because uh. if it's any higher than any of the settings that I just mentioned, Instagram will compress it. And once Instagram starts its uh, compression, everything goes to crap. <laughs> uh, and, and it looks it looks horrible. Um, so you'll notice that the videos and stuff on my Instagram look really in focus and clear is because I use those settings. And even if I shoot in 4K on my camera, mm -hmm. in my post processing software, I'll export it as 1080p uh, and mm -hmm. make sure that it's optimal uh, or optimized for for social media posting. Right. Yeah, that, that's a great tip there, and uh, we'll we'll make sure that we get from you those uh, those settings again, and we'll put them down into the comments for those of you who are watching this later. Yep, for sure. I'll, I'll write it down for anyone that is interested. Fantastic. Uh, in terms of taking pictures, uh, when you first start out, make sure you turn off the flow of the pumps in your tank because when corals are constantly moving and you're taking a picture, that movement might blur the picture. Uh, minimizing the movement helps with the clarity and, and getting the picture in focus. Uh, like I said earlier, cover the windows, cover, turn off TVs, uh, monitors from computer screens and stuff like that. Shut them all off to reduce the glare and the reflections. Um, even when you're taking pictures, the clothes you wear makes a huge difference. If you're wearing <laughs> white or you're wearing a, a you're wearing bright t-shirts or something. <laughs> So wear darker clothing because it, it reflects less on, on light sources and even onto the tank glass surface itself. Um, so that's one thing that I do, uh, using the lens hood earlier to remove the reflections, using a tripod, making sure that it's steady, using a remote shutter to minimize the vibrations of touching the camera when you're taking uh, the picture. And uh, oh, one other thing, make sure you clean your glass, right? The, that's on the, uh, <laughs> the inside and the outside. Right, right. Uh, and so I, I use a, a reef safe glass cleaner, but you can use vinegar and water uh, and it will work equally as well. Yeah, th those are all great tips. And thank you for going into this a little 101 with us. For those of you who are not as familiar with your system, do you mind in the minute that we have left or so, just giving us a, a quick gist of the size of your tank, what you're running on it real quick, just, just so folks yeah. uh, just can get a bit of an idea. So behind me is an innovative marine uh, EXT 200 as an external overflow. It's a six foot tank, uh, 200 gallons. I have uh, Kessels and Reef Rights running the lights uh, in here. 
And then as far as equipment goes, oh man, that's another series, Aaron. <laughs> that's another series. <laughs> we don't have enough time for several weeks to get into that, but uh, yeah. you, you've but got a lot of great stuff down there. The tank's so, been running a little under two years at this point, and it's it's thriving at the moment. Uh, I put a lot of work and automation into the tank because I just uh, had a kid, and yeah. the less that I <laughs> spend time uh, dealing with my tank, uh, the happier you know everyone around me is. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I, I get it. Trust me, I understand. And, and real quick before we let you go, do you have a favorite Aquaforest product that uh, that you're digging at the moment? Oh, absolutely. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. I've been trying the Aquaforce liquid foods recently, mm -hmm. uh, the rotifers, the Fido. Uh, I'm going to try the liquid mysis soon because it's just convenient for me. I, I like popping them out of the fridge and just putting in a, a couple of squirts into the tank and the, and the corals and the fish go crazy for it, right? It's very convenient for me. I don't have to take out frozen food, thaw it, clean it, uh, put it in the tank. And most importantly, you know, the Aquaforce line, uh, it doesn't dirty your water. The The nutrients doesn't spike. Um, I've noticed that the quality and the uh, purity of the liquids uh, helps a lot with maintaining your nutrient levels in the tank. Awesome. And we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we get you some of that mysis uh, food to try. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. All right, briefers. Thank you guys for joining us today. So again, this is part one of part two. Next time we're going to go into some more details on it and probably bring up another screen of some really nitty gritty stuff. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably ask Peter to talk a little bit about the uh, the underneath side of his sump and share some of those things as well. So we can get a, a little bit fuller understanding, not just of his photography mastery, but also as a reefer, some of the things that he's done uh, to really take the hobby further in terms of automation, planning, the, the use of technology to help inform um, his tank and, and how he looks at it. So uh, for those of you who are joining today live, Thank you for taking the time to join. Michael, thanks for joining. Appreciate you coming a little late, but uh, to everyone who's joined, thank you for that. Uh, it's been great. I appreciated all your comments. And if you have any other comments, questions for Peter or for the Aquaforest, leave them down in the chat below. Hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you real soon. Peter, once again, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. See you guys. All right, till next time, Reefers. <laughs>